All right, a story that no one else in the mainstream media is covering. It's good TV. It's a good story. Clint Lawrence killed the enemy, and yet he's serving in prison today. The soldier done wrong by the federal government, and it's like, dude, the rest of the platoon's right over f***ing here, and we're telling you, you're wrong. Was there anybody in the platoon that was with Clint that said that that was the wrong decision? Well, that I don't rightly know. He ordered the killing of civilians. It made me sick. I'm not saying that he didn't make mistakes, but war is ugly, war is messy. It made me sick that he wasn't even allowed to wear the uniform again. I really appreciate my new American family. Lawrence was released Friday from the U.S. military prison, Fort Leavenworth. He came out, he hugged his parents, we gave him a part. We finally have a commander in chief that understands our mission. They want a soldier who they believe was wrongly accused to be freed from prison, and that's not so bad if that was the case but it's not. All he was trying to do is protect his men to keep them from going home in body bags. You can't make the story of that because it sells. Anyway, we're glad you're home. Yeah, I, 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 I really appreciate it. Your country owes you an apology. It tainted all of our Army careers with murder. Clint Lawrence was convicted of war crimes, championed by conservative media, pardoned by the president, but the men of 1st Platoon want to set the record straight. I'm Zach Thomas. I was a fire support specialist of 1st Platoon, 473 Cav, Charlie Troop. My name is Mike McGinnis. I ran platoons as a staff sergeant. I was Private First Class Lucas Gray. I was a designated marksman in weapons platoon. I wanted to do good. I wanted to, you know, serve my country. As naive as that sounds, that's what I wanted to do. I was excited to go to Afghanistan, like, you know, lots of cherry privates are. Um, kind of faded real quick once I was actually there. First platoon deployed to Afghanistan in 2012. Over a decade into the war, the Taliban were still strong. The fighting took its toll. At a certain point, it, it became less about the patriotism and, and, and all that, and it just became more about being in a unit with my friends, you know, with my family, and just trying to make it through. Three months in, they were sent to a remote southern village. In a matter of weeks, they lost four men to injury, including the leader of their platoon. Everything happened in the span of these few weeks, and it's just like, Jesus, man, can we catch a break? They were sent to a nearby base to regroup and to meet their new leader, First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence. Lawrence had spent five months in Afghanistan on a fortified base. He had never seen combat. Look, Clint Lawrence is an office dweller. He never should have been given a field command. He showed zero aptitude for it. He came in with his own set of rules and how he was gonna control our area. He said this was gonna be red zone of basic training. Red zone of basic training is when uh, people are the hardest on you, they try to crack you. And that was his plan for our area, we're gonna crack the locals. The first platoon had spent months trying to win the locals' trust. Our officer would sit down with the elders, talk to them about stuff that had been going on. You know, do you need anything? What could we do to make things better? I remember shooting a sing shot with one of the kids, trying to hit a coke can. He just thought it was the coolest thing ever. Those are the people we were there protecting. That is why we were there. And uh, I don't believe that he saw that. Three days into his command, Lawrence told the men that the rules of engagement had changed. Lawrence comes out from the tent and he's like, hey, you know, we're allowed to fire at people on motorcycles. And I was like, that doesn't sound right because everybody in Afghanistan rides around on a motorcycle. Where do you think he got that from? I, I, he made it up. We were gonna go into the village, pull people out of their houses and threaten them. I kind of got that nagging feeling that something bad something bad was gonna happen. It started as a standard foot patrol, through the grape fields to the village to meet with local elders. On their way, they saw three men on a motorcycle. They were almost 200 yards away and appeared to be unarmed. Laurent said, why aren't you shooting yet? One soldier fired and missed. The bike stopped. The other soldiers held their fire. Smoke them, Lawrence ordered over the radio. From the armored vehicle nearby, a gunner opened fire. Two of the men were killed. The third ran away. 
when the weapon fired, it's just like I got knocked out and I blacked out. I don't, I can't remember very much about it. I was kind of scared, angry, disgusted. I was nauseous. I was really, really, really nauseous. I knew, you know, I knew something terrible had happened. Lawrence's men turned him in that night. A year later, 14 of them testified at his trial. He was convicted of murder and sent to prison. So I figured Lawrence, he would go to prison and that would be the end of it. I didn't think there'd be this huge media storm, uh, but there was. The military justice system can and will be manipulated by prosecutors who want to put our guys behind bars. And they'll First platoon was broken up. The men went their separate ways, but Lawrence's crimes followed them. I started drinking heavily. I had the same dream that, you know, I was, I was lying in bed, I couldn't move, and there were people standing around me, just like emptying their rifles into me. I joined the Army at 17 years old. And, you know, with, the, with that happening, it's just like, what, what have I wasted my life doing? You know, what, what was the point? Zach Thomas went home to Texas and back to his old ways. So before the army, after the army, during the army, I was super right-wing conservative. That's how my whole family is. That's how my whole town is. He was driving to college one day in 2018, listening to the radio. I got a letter yesterday from Clint Lawrence. This guy's in jail for no reason at all. He saved American lives. He's in Leavenworth. He's serving 20 years in prison. He needs a pardon. I heard on the radio Sean Hannity talking about Clint Lawrence and this situation. He's described it as a, a brave soldier that was protecting his men in Afghanistan. It floored me immediately. I pulled over on the side of the road, slammed my brakes on, and called, find a phone number and call him. I was expecting a call and, and basically get put on the phone with Sean Hannity real quick, and I was gonna set them straight. You know, these are my people. Y'all are just being fed some bullshit. Let me correct you all on this. And then I learned that they didn't want to hear the truth. We should not be prosecuting warriors who kill the enemy. Mike McGinnis began receiving death threats. I had people calling, you know, my phone at like two, three in the morning, and uh, you know, calling me a traitor and I should be shot, and they were gonna come down here and shoot me. Spread out across the country now, the men of 1st Platoon kept dying. Cancer took Mark Kerner. Matthew Haynes, paralyzed by a bullet to the neck in Afghanistan, died of a blood clot. Nick Carson crashed his car while drinking. Jarrett Rull pulled a gun at a party and was fatally shot. Everybody thinks like we're cursed, you know, in a way. Like, why do so many of us keep dying stateside after the fact? And that's the only time we ever saw each other again was after another one of us dies, and it just kept happening since deployment. This incident made a dark mark on all of us, and it almost feels like it's just catching up to us one by one. In October 2019, James Twist committed suicide. None of his fellow soldiers had seen it coming. I mean, every one of them beat us up, but like Twist is the one that kind of really caught us off guard. Really caught us off guard. He was such a good man. He was just a genuinely good man. Uh, and I just, I hate that he was hurting so bad that he felt the need to take his own life. The men of 1st Platoon gathered in Grand Rapids to mourn him. He was the most selfless man I ever knew on this planet. He did not care if he died. He did not care if his limbs were to get ripped off. He didn't care. He just cared that his guys were okay. At the ceremony, there was a rumor Rance would be pardoned soon. Two weeks later, he was, and was welcomed home as a hero. Some 250 people gathered in the Hunt County town of Merritt last night to show their support for Army First Lieutenant Clint Lawrence. He arrived in the back of a pickup truck and spoke to the crowd from a stage draped in red, white, and blue. The one thing we had, the person responsible for all of it was, you know, getting punished. And now we don't have that. You'll probably, hopefully, see me on uh, Fox News tomorrow and maybe the day after because I owe these guys and gals because they uh, are
are very instrumental in getting me out. Joining us now, Army First Lieutenant Clint Lorenz. On Fox News, Lorenz told his version of the story to an audience of millions. You were there 72 hours that you came to take over a platoon where a bunch of Taliban on motorcycles had killed members of that platoon and took out the leader, severely injuring him, correct? Okay. Taliban on motorcycles never attacked our platoon. These guys passed the checkpoint and didn't stop, right? Correct. There was no checkpoint. How many seconds did you have to decide whether or not they were like the ones that injured the last platoon leader and killed others? It was just a few seconds. A few seconds. This guy came in with the idea that we were going to kill people on motorcycles. That's what he wanted, and there was no few seconds about it. There's so many things going through your head. You know, you, you're responsible for those guys. You're responsible for not just the Americans on the ground, the American soldiers, um, you know, the, the young 18-year-old soldiers from across the country. We love to say he was protecting his men that day, but if anything, uh, he just put his men in more danger because he ordered the killing of civilians. We are also responsible for the, the reputation of the United States. That's our reputation. Killing Afghans and getting on Fox News and lying about it. That's the reputation of the United States. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! When they do what they did to me, which was, um, you know, throw me under the bus. It's not vetted, it's not confirmed, it's just this asshole going on television and saying something that they take as gospel because he's an American soldier. How about those guys in air-conditioned offices that want to sit back and judge your three-second decision? The people that think American soldiers are beyond reproach actually diminishes our service. I agree with Trump on lots of things. Obviously, I can't agree with him on this decision. He was duped by the fake media, like just like he talks about everybody else. He, he doesn't even realize that it, it happened right in front of his face. And I will always stick up for our great fighters. People can sit there in air-conditioned offices and complain. It's a shame that this is even part of our story. And it's a shame that people have taken this story and twisted it to fit their narrative. The biggest problem I have with Lawrence's whole, his movement or whatever the hell you want to call it is, you know, we're pro, you know, pro-troops. No, you're pro-troop, one, singular. Because there were 30 of us that spoke out against his wrongdoing and you essentially told us to go f ourselves. You know, it's jammed into your head from the day one, mission, mission first, mission first, mission first, we accomplished the mission, right? And the mission was you know, winning over this little corner of Afghanistan we were in, making it safer. When this happened, we had failed that mission. So all that sacrifice, all that blood, sweat, and tears, all that work was for nothing. You know, we left our little piece of Afghanistan worse than when we came which is failure to a degree that I've never known before.